Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and today I wanted to make a video about kind of a wish list of, you know, quality of life and that sort of changes that I would like to see in World of Warcraft in either patch 9.1.5 or going forward. Um, it's a little bit of a strange video to be making, I know, because, you know, if you'd asked me two weeks ago to prioritize the things I'd like to see changed in the game, I would have given you uh, the easing up of restrictions on conduit or on covenants, um, the removal of the AOE cap, removal of conduit energy, uh, those sorts of things, and pretty much everything we've learned about 9.1.5 so far has been basically just checking off those top items on the wish list, uh, and that's great. And I want to you know get right at right at the top of this video that if nothing else, if nothing from this list that I'm about to give was implemented in patch 9.1.5. I still think it would probably be the single best patch um, to ever happen to World of Warcraft in terms of just like how much of an improvement it was from the patch before. Um, but I feel like it's also useful to create a video with kind of a list of, you know, remaining grievances and uh, other things they may not have thought about and ways that the current systems are causing still friction uh, in the game. So without without further ado, let's get started. I think that a thing to talk about is Shards of Domination in particular. Uh, Shards of Domination remain a system that is pretty daunting for alt players, for players who don't primarily raid. Um, and I think it's also a system that's pretty low upside in the sense of like, it's not like something like tier sets where if you look, you're like really preserving something really cool and flavorful and it may end up being worth the the friction, the pain that it's causing to the players that are getting access to them. Um, so for that reason, I would love to see them just very much ease up on restrictions for shards. I would love to see, you know, Mythic Plus pieces and raid pieces in these shard slots. Just get a, shard, a socket of domination added to them. Uh, in patch 9.1.5, I think that would be a huge way to improve the system. And I think that if you did that, then you could do another thing with shards, which would be good, which is remove the in Torghast or in the Maw part of the Shards of Domination set bonus, you know, text. Um, I believe that that text is there to make it so that in 9.2, the next raid we go to, that will automatically be turned off. And then their thinking is, so that will naturally lead to those uh, those pieces becoming obsolete. But as of right now, 252 items with a, a rank 5, you know, damage shard in them, that will be worth wearing, you know, for whatever the next raid is, in a similar way to Benthic Armor, right? When Benthic Armor had a, a 1 or 2% damage proc in it, you would happily drop 30 item levels for those things. Um, and so similarly, they it already requires more work. Before we go into the next tier, they're already probably going to have to nerf or deactivate the shard effects anyways. So I think they should just let us play with the actual set bonuses in Mythic Plus, in PvP. Maybe not in PvP, I don't know enough about PvP. Maybe you gotta maybe you gotta leave that out of PvP because uh they were I mean the shard effects themselves are already they already had to nerf Shard Akir like four times um, for PvP, so maybe you leave that part out. But uh, I think that making the set bonuses work in Mythic Plus would be nice. One annoying and invisible part of shards is that as you swap between mythic plus and raid you just keep having to look at like the, just the, the right shards change between the two and it's like they change by quite a big amount you know if you're if you're not wearing the speed shard and the unholy aura shard in raid and you're not getting your unholy set bonus that's really bad and then if you are wearing them in mythic plus and so you're not wearing you know your extra damage shards or your shard of gear uh that's really bad and so you know what are we uh what 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 is the what is the benefit that's being gained from that really bad part i don't see it um so i think that they should get rid of it i think they should just make the make the effects work in mythic plus they're the cool parts of shards anyways nobody is excited about dealing 0.5 percent stacking damage increase up to three times on a target but getting an unholy upset proc is actually something that does feel good um, and getting, you know, Winds of Winter absolutely feels good. Um, so those should be in the whole game, and they should make shards and Stygian Embers and Domination Socketed stuff much easier to acquire. 
Siji numbers in particular, you know, I, I believe the system is designed the way it is because they, they wanted it to be a many months long, you know, grind from when the patch came out so that people weren't just done with the patch super fast uh, and still had upgrades from the raid. But once we get to 9.1.5, the problem with that is that then any alts are just going to be looking at mains that have already done those three months to get their all five of their shards to rank five plus some extra shards for different circumstances or whatever. And they'll just feel it feels it'll feel so bad to have that sized grind stretching out in front of you. Um, so at that point, I'd love to see them shrink the grind uh, because the initial problem no longer such a big deal. Uh, and instead, there are new problems that would be better served by by shrinking it. So uh, I would like to see Stygian Embers from places like the Weekly Vault. Um, I think that would be a, a good source of Stygian Embers. Um, maybe even from your first N Mythic Plus dungeons each week. Um, something like that could be a cool place to let you upgrade your shards a little bit faster. I think that also the Corthia-based systems would be cool to see them expanded further. I think things like Deathbound Shards, the Socketing item, and especially Soul Twinning Crescents should be dropping from like raid bosses. You know, raid bosses, when the patch starts, there's the exciting possibility that they will drop a Shard of Domination, and then you get all nine of your shards, and like you can no longer drop a um, you can no longer drop a Shard of Domination, right? But what if you could just drop a Deathbound Shard after you had all nine of your shards, right? Wouldn't that be pretty cool? That's the item that gives you a conduit. Um, and similarly, I think socket items from Raid, from Mythic Plus, from Callings, from PvP um, would be a very nice way to start making that more accessible as well. Um, because I think that cataloged research grind is not one of the strong points of World of Warcraft that people log in to do. Um, and I think that it would be cool if the stuff you do log in to do, Mythic Plus, Raid in my case, um, were able to reward those things instead of feeling like you're for you know you're just behind if you don't go and do the the Corthia stuff. Uh, okay, got a couple other kind of manifestos to deliver here. Um, first one is about the global release. This is not a nine point one point five thing because as far as we know, there's not going to be any sort of raid in nine point one point five. But going forward, I really think they should reconsider their position on a global release for the raid. Um, so the Mythic Raid has right now a pretty big disparity between regions when it comes out. It comes out 16 hours ahead for the American servers, then the European servers, and then another 16 hours before the Chinese servers. Um, and that creates a potential disparity in fairness that is whether or not it's actually there depends on which day the boss dies. So for instance, in Sanctum of Domination, Blizzard got extremely lucky that Echo was able to kill Sylvanas on their first reset. That was only possible because Echo was just out of their minds insane players in that raid, uh, and that, that whole week they just played so well and so efficiently. But if they were just slightly off, you would instead have had a raid tier that was almost entirely determined by the fact that North America had a reset first, and that would have been really bad news and it wouldn't have just been bad news for the 20 players in echo or the 20 players in complexity limit or even the 60 other players in, in the world top five it would have been bad news for the millions of people who follow the race to world first uh, on twitch or in some form um, and so i think that they should reconsider their calculus which right now is like oh we don't want a global release because uh, it would be a little hard to do and it would only benefit this small number of people because i think that if you had a race end that way, it would be really bad news um, for just the legitimacy of the race to world first, which is a mat like it's the biggest event on Twitch whenever it's running. And right now, Blizzard basically just does what they're doing anyways, and that happens. But if there were to be like several tiers in a row where it was just at the start of week two, the, the second reset, the boss dies to an American guild because they got enough gear and it's like pretty easy, right? Limit literally walked in and one shot Sylvanas on their second reset. Which, could you imagine if that had been a world first? That would have been uh, so bad for the race to world first. So um, I think Blizzard should take a take a step to protect one of the best things about World of Warcraft that they don't have to do like any other work to work on. Um, and they should just do it by the same way that they do the global release for an expansion, right? So you just 
you know, the, the global release for an expansion already is a much bigger undertaking that impacts casual players much more. A common argument against a global raid release is that, you know, for some players, it's going to be at an awkward time of the day. Um, and, you know, that there would have to be maintenance and maintenance in the middle of prime time. But the global release already proves that, first of all, for casual players, the expansion release is much bigger news than the second or third week of a patch when the raid becomes available. And clearly it's great news. It's great there for everybody that it's a global release. Um, and second off, with this, they already proved that they can do maintenance at a different time than releasing an expansion. So certainly they should be able to do maintenance at a different time than enabling a raid, right? Um, so just, you know, you have to do the maintenance slightly, you'd have to desync the maintenance from the raid reset for a first couple weeks. But that's the thing is, this only matters for realistically the first two resets of a tier. And then you can just go back to uh, the normal resets and uh, it would be better or the same for pretty much everybody. For a few specific time zone guilds, the first one or two resets you would have reset in the middle of your raid hours but you know for all the guilds that that would be new for right the guilds over in this part of the world it would literally just be a bonus extra like first half reset that they'd be getting um that they don't get right now so i i don't see how this would be bad for anybody um, i think that it would be obviously like a little bit costly for blizzard to do this but i think it would be way more costly if blizzard just if, if the race to world first was just nuked by uh you know, if, if Echo had done 2% less damage or whatever, 1% less damage, uh, and, and limited killed at week two on a, on a one shot on their, their second lockout. So um, I think that that is something that they should really factor in. And of course, they should make sure that like maintenance isn't happening in prime time for Asia and for, for Europe. But, um, you know, they, they can do that on a much bigger undertaking with the global release of the expansion. So it should be possible for the raid as well. Okay. Next manifesto I'd like to deliver is on Master Looter. So Master Looter is something you hear talked about um, pretty frequently. It's something that after all of the other player <laughs> player wishes were basically requested, there was a set of people that started saying, and now bring back Master Looter. And, uh, you know, there's also a healthy amount of people that don't think Master Looter should come back. And I've kind of evolved on this one to my current position, which... Uh, is that Master Looter shouldn't come back in the form that it was in, but they should make a couple of improvements to the way that personal loot works right now. Master Looter used to be a system where uh, just any, but the, the guild, you know, you could initially just any raid could set it to be Master Looter, and then in Legion you had to be 80% or more in the same guild, and then the Master Looter could just determine where each item went when it dropped from the boss. Um, and there are problems with that system, not for top end guilds like in my guild everybody would prefer for that to be the system um, because we would just prefer for the loot to go where it's best for the raid. Um, and even the healers in my raid ha are totally fine with not getting items and um, would just rather help out the guild as much as possible. But that is not true for a lot of players that play this game. Particularly, it's real. it becomes not true very quickly as you drop below, you know, the world top 100. Um, and people want to get loot. They want to get items that are upgrades for them. But... Even among those players, it feels bad to get an item that is not an upgrade for you and is also not tradable. And right now, that does still happen quite a bit. In particular, it happens in the trinket slots. For instance, on my character right now, uh, with these two trinkets equipped, if a 252 trinket from the raid dropped for me, it would not be an upgrade. I would not, I would not want to equip it over either of these two trinkets. And I would like to be able to trade that trinket, right? Um, and that's true for a lot of specs with their trinkets, right? A lot of specs... There are 239 trinkets that blow 252 raid trinkets that are good for other specs out of the water. Um, and so I would like to see them remove trading restrictions from trinkets entirely. Just let me trade any trinket that drops for me. You know, if I want to keep it, I'll keep it. Um, but let me trade it if it drops for me. I think that they are hesitant to remove trading restrictions entirely, which I would also, that would be much better for me and I would prefer it. And if they're willing to, I'd advocate for it. But um, at the very least, give me trinkets, and I think the other thing they should do is give me a, a level range. So right now, if I drop, say, a 252 Bracers, I can't trade them, right? Um, but there are a lot of item slots where six item levels isn't enough to make up for stat distribution, and so there are 252 items that can drop for players that are not upgrades over their 246 
Heroic Sylvanas or Heroic Kel'Thuzad items, those should be tradable. Uh, so I would like to see Trinket trade restrictions removed entirely, um, all the kind of spec-based restrictions. I think they've already removed most of these, but they should remove all of them that are still there. You know, if I already have uh, items in a slot that are flagged for, for tank spec, I should be able to just trade DPS items that drop in that slot if I want to. Um, and also give me like a seven item level buffer. So if I drop a 252 and I have a 246 in that spot, it might not be an upgrade for me. Just let me trade it. Um, if I only have a 239 in that slot, okay, lock it to me. Make it so that I'm not being held hostage by some tyrannical guild master or master looter or whatever uh, and being forced to trade it, sure. Uh, but I think that, that those, the, those two specific changes would remove a lot of the grievance that people that causes people to pine for master looter. The, the bad feelings that cause us to be like, man, I wish I could just master loot this, is when I get an item that is not an upgrade for me that I will not use. I, that feels so bad. Uh, and I think that those two changes I mentioned would solve most of that without bringing back any of the potential for people feeling obligated to trade items that are legitimate upgrades for them. Uh, okay, so those are my manifestos about the global release and the master looter situation. Um, got a couple of minor, minor quality of life suggestions now to rapid fire here. One, let me Valor upgrade on my alts without having to get Keystone Master. Um, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I've gotten 2,000 score on my main and I've gotten the item to drop on my alt and I've collected the Valor on my alt, those should be enough steps to make a, 230, a 246 item. I shouldn't need to go and do 16 dungeons for score, right? Uh, and get enough, get enough Mythic Plus score to upgrade my items. Um, I can, obviously, and like I am, but it feels awkward and bad. And honestly, it's the only bad thing about the Mythic Plus score system from my perspective. Um, I think that a lot of people's fears about the system, uh, which I always said were not going to come to fruition, uh, were about how Keystone Master was being tied to score have not come true. But the fact that they sneakily removed the account-wide nature of Valor upgrades and instead made them character-specific was a step backwards and should be reverted. Um, so I'd like to see that. Um, another thing I'd like to see, just multiply tank threat by, like, give them an extra 50% threat or something. Uh, tank threat is still still a little sketch. It's only going to get sketchier as, uh, as damage continues to go up for other players. Um, and there are still situations where tanks are just doing everything they can to make threat and not holding it against certain specs. Um, and I think that that is just not a, a compelling part of modern World of Warcraft. I think there's a good reason that the skittish affix was removed, and um, I think they should just 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 hit tanks with another 50% threat multiplier. I don't know. Especially if they're in melee. I don't, I, like, I get that you want tanks to not kite, but if tanks are in melee and they've autoed a mob and they've used an ability on it in the last three seconds, like, that should be a sufficient checklist to have it not rip threat. Uh, okay. Another gripe I have is Keystone re-rolling. This is so minor, but it would be sweet if you could... Say I have a 16 key, right, or something. I guess I don't right now. But say I had a 16 key, and then I went and timed a 23 key. I should be able to re-roll my 16 key up to, like, at least a 20. Maybe a 21, right? Um, so I think that, yeah, when you time a key and you use the Keystone re-roller, it should upgrade your key to within a couple key levels of the key you've just proved you can time. Because uh, otherwise, it's kind of rough to be stuck there for like a week with a, a key that is very low compared to whatever it is. And, you know, obviously 23, 24 are not a relevant number for a lot of players, but 15 is, right? Like, say you got a plus six key in your bags, which a lot of alts do, and you catch up pretty quick to a level where you can do plus 15s, which a lot of alts do, uh, and then you do a 15 and your key is still stuck at plus six for the week. Like, yeah, change that. Um, another minor thing tells the affix rotation in advance. Just post it somewhere when we go to a new season it is very annoying to not know it in advance and it delays at least it delays my content it scuffs my content quite a bit uh, to not know it in advance but i think it's also annoying for everybody else too but that may just be a for me thing but that's on my list so i'm saying it um also just nerf bolstering and necrotic a lot those two affixes suck and could suck less and nobody would hate it and they they nerfed them like a tiny bit in 9.1 but just i don't know just to give those affixes the storming treatment like take them take them and reduce the impact they have on the dungeon by like three a factor of three or something i don't know a factor of four like put put them in the dirt and they, they will still matter a lot but at least they won't be as uh as damaging as they are right now um 
on that front also spiteful dude make spiteful's auto like half as hard i i don't know those things hit way too hard uh, okay another bug fix so okay we're, we're now in the realm of like bug fix type stuff let me log over to my demon hunter so i can demonstrate one of these things uh because i realize it's on the list um okay one so this is i mean this is all just at this point just bug fixes uh one thing is the tiny dancing shoes power from mythic plus when healers select that it just doesn't work um it's like flag is not for their role or something let's fix that uh, another thing the Tormentors of Torghast event. I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but like when Tormentors of Torghast procs, which, oh my goodness. Imagine how imagine how perfect this video is. I, I It'll proc in like one minute. But when it actually starts, sometimes you just don't get a progress bar. And then if you tag mobs and kill them, that doesn't advance the progress towards it. So like, have you ever been on a shard where Tormentors just takes like 13 minutes to do and it has to like respawn several times uh, the mobs before you actually get the thing? That's why it's that bug. Um, so fix that one. And then the last bug that I had has actually been fixed since I last noticed it. So we're good. All's good here. Uh, everything, everything is great. There is my list of uh, some big changes I'd like to see to the current patch systems. Some kind of long-term manifestos for frequently discussed topics on Twitter and Twitch and YouTube. Uh, and some minor to medium quality of life things that I'd like to see in the game. Hope you liked the video. Uh, if you think any of these ideas are cool, you know, I don't know, post them around places, uh, hit subscribe, hit subscribe on my Twitch as well, uh, follow me on Twitter, and yeah, thanks for watching, have a good one, bye.